Hi, I just bought a new 3D printer. Been working with Ender 3s for a while. I'm going to do a upgrade to be able to print larger objects and use engineering materials. So uh, I'm going to open this up. It's a uh, Chidi, Chidi X Max 3 enclosed printer with a heated chamber. So we're going to open this up and uh, put it through its paces. I bought this with my own money and uh, I'm going to tell you the pros and the cons. Okay, it came with this styrofoam thing here. And we have a piece of plastic I've seen on other people's videos. This is what you use to do your Z offset settings. And some tools. Some rubber feet, screwdriver, and a hot end. This is a hardened hot end for uh, abrasive materials. Ethernet cord. And a USB stick. And that looks like it in there. Now let's see what we got in the main box. Okay, the printer. And uh, it just under 40 kilograms. I'm gonna have to uh, arrange this so it's easy to lift before I can put this on my table. Ready? Can you do it by yourself? Si. Wow. <coughs> wow. It's heavy. Okay. Somewhat no. portable. Wow. Okay. Putting it on the best table we have, because my other tables, I don't think will survive this thing. They're mostly for having uh, meals on outdoors. What is the weight of the of this uh, machine? Thirty-seven kilograms. Wow. And now we're going to open it. I have not seen a power cord yet, so I'm hoping there's a power cord in here somewhere. Okay. That it's not coming off easily. I'm going to use some scissors. in the front here. Oh, what is this? <coughs> More oh. goodies. Yeah. Maybe all the power. Oh, yeah, that's where my power cord is. Yeah. Okay, I plugged it in and turned it on. I have not removed any of the the interior zip ties or anything left because uh, quick start manual said I could do this and then it would guide me through the uh, rest of the steps. So we're going to try it that way. Oh, it just lit up like a, very nicely. It's got some serious lighting in here, evidently. Okay, I want it in English. Okay, they told me to remove the ties, which I did. And I had to move this uh, print head over a little to get the tie out from behind it. Uh, oops, forgot one up here. 
and the two on each side, there's four total at the bottom. I can't get them out. I cut them. And then I saw the next step is to remove these screws. So we're going to remove these screws and then hopefully they'll come out. Okay, to get the, uh, the one out of the corner there, which is the y-axis, I guess, I had to move this thing around by hand, which you can do slowly and uh, clear space to get the ties out because the heads of the cable ties are big and it wasn't allowing me to get the ties out. Okay, I've uh, cut all the cords, taken the four screws out, which are very clearly labeled here using the included Allen wrench, and still I cannot get the uh, these ties out of here. And I don't want to force that axis up, so it says it's going to move the platform. I'm going to let it move it, and then hopefully I can get those out. And indeed, it is moving the platform. So hope they want me to get some packing foam out. Well, I'll get the foam out and the cable ties at the point when it stops. Okay, I see some foam down there now. This is going to allow me to do both steps. Oh yeah, now they come right out. And the foam is out. Oops, better go the other way. Because these uh, cable tie heads are large. Alright. Take out the packing foam. Caution. The packing foam may stick underneath the build platform. Okay, I didn't have that problem. Next. Preheat bed to the filament printing temperature. Oh, okay. It's PLA, so, um, I don't know what this was set to. Maybe 75? I don't know. Here we go. Please wait for the initialization of the platform and nozzle. Okay, after the auto bed leveling, it's now doing input shaping because um, this thing runs clipper and you don't have to add a accelerometer like I do on my Ender 3s because it must have one built in. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger, Will Robinson. Okay, it came with some desiccant, which you put into the uh, filament box. And one thing I need to tell everyone, please, please do not eat the desiccant. Okay, after a while the input shaper finished, and now it wants me to load some filament, which I shall do.
Okay, I just loaded the filament in and it's uh, printing uh, Benchy out. Moving pretty quickly and the first layer is uh, really good. And I notice this thing does not have a uh, BL touch in it. It has uh, an inductive sensor. So this is newer than uh, what the other reviewers were uh, using on their YouTube that I saw. And you can see that inductive sensor there. There are no moving parts that are that can break like the fragile uh, pins on these DL touches. Okay, looks kind of grayish, but it should be black. That might be a camera issue. This is real time printing, not sped up. So, so far it's been printing for 14 minutes. It's got two more minutes left. There's the first Banshee. Doesn't look too shabby. but we'll let it cool down and pull it off and give it a look under better light. Well, I have to admit, I don't do benchies, so this is the first benchie I've ever done, but it certainly looks good to my eyes. I don't see any major issues. In the next episodes, we're going to go into the details of the hardware and electronics inside of this machine, as well as trying to print some uh, more functional prints, larger prints, and then finally get into some engineering materials. Okay, now I'm printing a uh, Ugrinsky vertical axis wind turbine blade system to give this thing something a little more challenging to print. And so far, so good. I'll check this out in the morning and uh, see how it's doing then, but uh, this is something that I couldn't print uh, this large on my old printers and being bed slingers, as the object got taller, they would start to introduce problems into the, into the shapes. So hopefully this is going to work out well. Very excited to see this in the morning.